Ayn Antonescu, who was Hitler's ally and de facto the leader of Romania, is unique in history of the Second World War due to the fact that after his arrest he was interrogated at the Lubyanka in Moscow. Moreover, the execution of the dictator was very unusual. General Antonescu in Romania before becoming a dictator was a fairly respected person, distinguished by incorruptibility and directness. In 1940, when the Soviet Union demanded that Romania return Bessarabia in northern Bukovina, King Karl II decided not to enter into the confrontation and ordered his troops to clear these territories. However, public sentiments did not support the surrender of territories in any way, which led to a strong decline in the authority of the Romanian king. And at the same time, it led to the growing popularity of General Antonescu, who was categorically opposed to satisfying the demands of the Soviet Union. As a result, the Romanian monarch under the public pressure was forced to instruct Antonescu to form a new government. Instead, as interim head of government, the general suspended the constitution, dispersed parliament and demanded that Charles II abdicate the throne. The demand was fulfilled and the son of the disposed king, Michael I, ascended the throne. Despite the fact that he was formerly the head of Romania, the real power was already exclusively in the hands of Antonescu, who openly proclaimed himself the leader of the state. At the same time, the general actively sought a rapprochement with Hitler. He, in turn, was strongly interested in such an ally, especially since Romania possessed oil fields, which were a key raw material for the war. In Romania itself, Antonescu actually created a new parliament, filling all the seats with members of the ultra-Nazi party Iron Guard. Having dealt with the internal opposition, Antonescu quickly concentrated all power in his hands, in fact becoming the full ruler of Romania. Already on November 20, 1940, he signed a document in Berlin on joining the tripartite pact berlin rome tokyo after which the grateful Hitler sent his troops to protect the oil fields in Ploiestin. Then, in November 1940, Antonescu made it clear to Hitler and Ribbentrop that he was ready to fight on the side of Germany, and they in turn guaranteed the return of the territories occupied by the Soviet Union. On January 14, 1941, Antonescu again flew to Berlin to clarify the details on Romania's participation in the attack on the USSR. At home, long before the start of the mass extermination of Jews in the Germany itself and occupied Europe, Antonescu on his own initiative began to finally resolve the Jewish question. The anti-Semitic laws were unanimously approved by the government, Jews from Bessarabia and Bukovina were mass executed and the rest were deported to Transnistria. War against the USSR Romanian troops attacked the USSR like the Nazi Germans on June 22, 1941. Having captured the previously selected territories, the Romanians occupied Odessa, participated of the assault and capture of the Crimea, as well as the Battle of Stalingrad. However, Antonescu's fighting ardor soon began to gradually fade, and Hitler's support faded as well. This happened due to the fact that the Romanian troops were absolutely unsuitable for hostilities, running away from the battlefield at every opportunity. The mood in Romania itself gradually changed. On August 23, 1944, Kings Mihai I carried out a coup, overthrowing the Nazi government. As a result of the coup, Romania withdrew from the tripartite pact, moving into the anti-Hitler coalition. Antonescu himself, along with leading members of the government, was arrested and handed over to Moscow. According to the recollections of the Smirsh officer Mikhail Belousov, who accomplished the arrested, they behaved quite calmly, had an excellent appetite and enjoyed the food. Antonescu himself boasted to the officer that he met with Hitler's more often than all of German's allies and in general he had long been going to leave the war, and suggested that the king of Romania and his mother sign a truce with the Allies. Until April 1946, the arrested were kept in the internal Lubyanka prison. To date, the interrogation protocols have not been published. It is only known that during the Nuremberg Tribunal, the representative of the USSR stated, the interrogation of Antonescu was carried out in accordance with the law, which is of exceptional importance for clarifying the nature of Germany's relations with its satellites has been submitted to the tribunal. 
after the investigative actions and Tenesco and his entourage were transferred to Bucharest, where on May 6, 1964, the trial began. The process was open. It was attended by the TASC correspondents, representatives of the Romanian press, as well as accredited representatives of foreign media. The court stated that during the process all the necessary documents were examined, the archives were opened, and all the voiced facts underwent a preliminary check and were documented. Also, the indictment indisputably indicated that Antonescu and members of his government were guilty of war crimes, the disaster of Romanian people who against their will were placed in the service of Nazi Germany. And the most important accusation, which is quite natural and logical, the court called the following. The first specific act of national betrayal committed by the Antonescu dictatorship was the invitation to Hitler's troop to enter the territory of the country. Two weeks after the start of the process on May 17, 1946, the verdict was announced. Seven defendants, including Antonescu, were sentenced to death with confiscation of property. A little later, three of the death penalty were commuted to life imprisonment. The execution itself took place at June 1st at 6 p.m. According to the memoirs of the commander of the execution company, Kostika Gelavan, the execution was delayed for several hours because the answer from the royal palace to the petition of the convicts for pardon was expected. The execution was attended by persons whose presence was established by law, as well as the wife and mother of Antonesco. Kostika Gelavan recalled, There were five death sentences and the same number of pillars had already been dug. Mom and wife of Antonescu came. I heard his wife, Maria, said that she would be joining him soon. Maria Antonescu brought the beige and pinned it on his chest, and he told her to retire to a monastery and that in the future he would take his rightful place, which he deserves. Antonescu himself behaved in the last minutes of his life quite boldly. He demanded that he be shot not by gendarmes, but by soldiers. After receiving a refusal, Antonescu cursed for a long time and then demanded that he not be blindfolded and be allowed to command his own execution. Having the opportunity to say the last word, Antonescu declared that he was dying for the ideas of the Romanian people and then raised his head, giving the signal for his own execution. Surprisingly, he was not killed, but only wounded. Already lying down, Antonescu again ordered it to open fire on himself. But even after the second shot, the dictator was still alive. They managed to finish him off only the third time. The senior sergeant of the same execution company later described this moment in detail. The commander came and shot at him again. The doctor stated that Antonescu did not die. Then the commander fired again. Everyone was dead.